How does our body know when to be awake and when to be asleep? We spend around one third of our lives sleeping, but being able to sleep well is actually quite a complicated process. Scientists therefore developed the two process model of sleep regulation to help explain how sleep and wake are controlled. According to this model, two processes regulate our sleep-wake pattern. The first process, called process S, refers to the buildup of sleep pressure. This pressure to sleep builds up during wakefulness and then decreases as we sleep. For most people, being awake for 16 hours will build up enough sleep pressure to be able to fall asleep and stay asleep for around eight hours. Another way to think about process S is to liken it to hunger. The longer we go without food, the hungrier we get. But once we eat a big meal, we need to wait a while until we're hungry again. Process S is homeostatic, meaning we can only go so long without sleep before our sleep pressure builds up so high that we can't maintain wakefulness. Like when you stay up really late to watch a movie, but fall asleep during it. Other times, behaviours like napping or sleeping in can reduce our sleep pressure and make it more difficult to fall asleep at night. So process S explains sleep pressure, but how does our body know to sleep at night? The second process, process C, is responsible for the timing of sleep. Process C refers to our circadian rhythm, which is a 24 hour cycle that oscillates like a sine wave. There are many important bodily processes that follow this 24 hour cycle, including body temperature, digestion, and hormone production. For example, our brain produces melatonin at night when it's dark, but suppresses melatonin production in the morning and throughout the day whilst it's light. Process S and Process C work independently, but we get the best sleep when they're working together with a constant push and pull between them. Unfortunately, there are times when the two processes get out of sync and this can often lead to disrupted sleep. For example, if you work the night shift and have been awake for 24 hours, you may fall asleep quickly, only to be woken by your body clock a few hours later. In other words, Process S is ready to go to sleep, but Process C wants to be awake. This phenomenon also explains jet lag, with our body clock not quite adjusting to the new time zone, despite us being awake for many hours in transit. So there you have the two process model of sleep regulation. Whilst it doesn't explain everything about sleep weight regulation, it's a really useful conceptual model that allows us to understand how process S and process C work together to help get you a good night's sleep.